Welcome back my global family. This is where we left off in our last video. Thank you for watching. All right, Benjamin Banneker, here we come. Before it does actually rain, you know? Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we thought I was going to have you in an actual field. Yeah. So, Benjamin Banneker Colonial Farmstead. So, this was his farmstead. So, that's why we're out. It's, it's, yeah, that's, he owned this. That's why we're out here. And I think this is his home. Well, you know, they, they, back then, they oh, had, yeah, and people built what they need. They weren't into, yeah, yeah especially yeah. like a black man. Yeah. Black man show off like that, he's sure yeah, to get, he's like, yeah, hang him. Oh, I guess this is where he would make fires. Huh. Mm-hmm. Hi. How are you? Yeah. All right, thank you. Yes, I'm here. Hi, how you doing? Hi. How are you all? We're cooking lunch for Mr. Bennett. Oh, it smells so good. Now, we can smell it. It's smelling so good. Don't do it. No. You give up? We got a chicken right there. It's actually right behind Mom underneath the bed. Yes, it is. It is. a chamber pot. Look, it is a real chicken. Now, we don't have the lid for this one. It's a game hen. But in the middle of the night. Oh, game hen. Oh, the chicken. Mr. Banner, there it is. Mr. The <laughs> chickens we have nice. today now are here's monstrous. The best part. As the youngest like members of the household, oh. Mr. Banneker would it's be your cooking. job to clean it out. So <laughs> Isn't that cool? Old chicken we use game hens. Got no, it. That's not cool at all. That is not cool at all. But that's Mr. Banneker we are all familiar with. Okay. You would have been there too. Awesome. Yeah. Get you a copy of our Awesome. Awesome. So, do you have any questions about what we're doing here? This is yeah. what we're cooking today. I mean, First off, we're well, here we're doing once, this. and this is what's cooking today. Oh, this is so fun. These are all the actual recipes that he would have used. Okay, so this is his, because of what was growing on the land. What was growing in the Patapsco Valley in October. Mm -hmm. And that's what our menu, this month's menu is October. Nice. It's, like it's going to change every month. Because she, cause she was saying how food. small the house so was. I said, well, I don't think they, they, they just built just now, what the they needed. Seven people lived in here. Whoa, right seven, seven he people? And I mean right after oh, he wow. died. Wow. And it went well, there's a loft upstairs. Oh. But it's just a loft. Oh. So they slept upstairs. Well, they would have had a pallet or something upstairs. So we don't know what his daily life was like. We don't know what kind of It's just an open... That's where the kids slept. We know that he wrote and mom and dad we slept here. He they were small. We they were small people. We don't know what he likes for breakfast. Well, and so have you heard like the he word sleep tight? Yes. You know where that comes from. A little bit more about that. But do you know how? No. We call it experiential archaeology. There's no box spring. Really a fancy way for saying the mattress is just a pallet, <laughs> and it is on it strings. Oh. And if those strings get loose, you're sagging. So you wanted to keep your strings tight. There was a device that would grab the ropes and you could twist it and tighten the strings so you would sleep tight. Tight. Nice. Okay. Oh, that's fun. Yes. I had one of those. I didn't even know that's what it was. And it's, it's now, what is that? Oh, nice. It's a candle. 
Yeah. Which and is just preserved cabbage. Yes. You would have to um, take it up and, and pull it out. Yeah. I had one. So I didn't we'll even know what it was. And they got a Macala set, yeah, they do. the chalkboard. So We're I'm dealing nice. with cooking today. Oh, I'm yeah, loving this. So how long have you all been cooking today so far? Yeah, we started around, well, we've got to start early to get the fire going. It'll take us an hour just to get a usable fire. And we have to bring the wood with us. Okay. So we come in, the first thing we do is we build a fire. And we have been cooking since noon. And I can see how seven people can live here. It's just, it was just really for sitting, sleeping. Exactly. And then um, eating, and then you left the house. Except if you're mom, then this is your world right here. Your, your world, cooking in here. Here and the herb garden next door. And that herb garden is also your medicine chest. Okay. And there's another vegetable garden out that way. This was your world. That fire had to be kept going 24 hours, 24 7. So you had to keep it constant. Constant. And then, you know, you want to wash, you need to make soap. So that's something that. The woman of the house would be doing is making the soap, making any medications, uh, taking care of the clothing, and the cooking. And the cooking. This was quite a job. It, it, for a woman, you were up before dawn and you're awake until well after dark. Wow. Do you have any questions? Yes. The corn will grow up in his his children. He didn't have a wife. Banneker was, uh, did not marry and he did not have kids. So who are the seven people? He and his family, his, his uh, siblings and mom and dad, seven people. Now this is not the original cabin. Oh, it's not? No, the original cabin burned. Oh, okay. But on the same footprint. And it is very representational of what that cabin would have been looked like. This was actually down in Virginia, and they took it apart and brought it up. And then reconstructed it on this site. Yeah, this was the real original deal. This is it. And this is actually the site. They put it on the site. No, this is not the actual site of Bannon's okay. home. That's an archaeological site, and it's... I don't even know where it is, and I've been working here for five years, so they don't really want us to know where it is, because there can still be archaeological exploration there. Okay. But this cabin is fairly representational of what he lived in. It certainly got all the appliances. Yeah, I'm seeing it. We got the herbs uh, the for drying. And so we, we cook with the Dutch ovens so it's and, and the crane over the um, fireplace. Uh, this is what, this the was something it's, that Mr. Banneker would have been very familiar with. Yeah, like that's the law. That's it. Exactly. We that pretty much just use it for storage. Thank you. Now. Okay, okay. Oh, and I see tobacco <laughs> hanging here. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mm. Tobacco was it. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what got this whole place barrel. started was tobacco. So they even store their their tools inside. These days okay. that wheelbarrow is going to wind up in firewood if they don't get it out of here. <laughs> they, these are not the type of you t dishes they would have used, it, mm -hmm. is it? Dishes are, but you know this stuff. Oh, of course, no, right. not nah, yeah. This is called redware. Hey, okay. okay. what did they make it? It was it was the red natural red clay of the clay. Okay. and fired. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. And normally, excuse me, I just had a bite of those things. They are yeah, dry. they're looking good. It takes you about a week to swallow all of that. So, um, what is this? It's a Johnny cake. Um, now, these are dry. You want to try The whole idea take. is these are um, meant to last. We think that the name comes from a derivation of the journey cake. Okay. Oh, that makes sense. Right. So, I mean, if you lived here and you needed to go to Baltimore, that was an all-day trip. Yeah. That was not a simple thing. So okay. you needed something that you could put in your bag that will keep you going. And it won't go bad. Exactly. Now, I equate it to hardtack. You know what hardtack mm -mm. is? Hardtack is called ship's biscuit. This was a very, very bone-dry biscuit that ships carried. Um, the idea is, again, it wouldn't go bad. It's really nothing more than baked flour and water. I made these a little while ago. Oh, wow. Um, what you would do with that is it's, it's obviously not something that you can eat like that. Yeah, I wouldn't want to. 
You feel it. It's a kicker. <laughs> but when but you put you it do, in water, it so it softens up. It'll soften up. You break it up, and it acts not only as a thickener but a filler. Okay. So this one, it's it's getting there. I haven't really put them in there for long enough, but you can see it's it's becoming malleable. Mm -hmm. I'm actually going to take this home, so bust them up, and eat it. <laughs> that looks good, though. Thank you. That does. It smells good. Look at this, Mama Yadis. When they traveled, they would carry that along. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was it was not the most exciting thing to eat. Well, it do look good, though. It looks good. I have got potatoes and corn. Um, now I threw a little garlic in here, but garlic really wasn't that much of a recipe item. It That's lobscous. It's called lobscous. We, we we battle on the definition, on the pronunciation. <laughs> um, it's it's more a technique than a recipe, but it's it's using those biscuits to go ahead and, and thicken the thicken the stew, and it's going to bulk it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, garlic, like I was saying, was not really that much of a recipe ingredient. It was more of a medicinal ingredient. Now, we've got an herb garden right on the side there, but probably two-thirds of the use of that herb garden was your medicine chest. You knew what kind of tea to make if you had an upset stomach. Mm. You knew what kind of plant to chew on if you had a headache. You knew you know, what to grind up and pound into a pulp to go ahead and put on a wound. So that was mostly the medicine cabinet because there were no doctors. Right. First off, there were no doctors right. of, of any consequence. I mean, the lucky you, you were lucky if you had a barber that would pull teeth. Mm -hmm. But these, all these things are things that you would have known about to take care of yourself. Mm. I, unfortunately, have never learned it. Um, yeah. Although I'm picking up things as we go along for beer, but that that's the purpose of a lot of that. Yeah, cause, and it's so funny. We still use a lot of garlic. Like when raising my children, that that was our medicine in the house: garlic. Mm -hmm. We would chop up garlic well, and give it saying, to our children. Yeah, for a, make like a poultice, like a bread poultice yep. in England. You would have your onions and your garlic, and you'd put milk. You'd boil it in milk, mm -hmm. and then you would drop white bread and cubes of bread into it, and it sort of mashed together. You could have it like a poultice. Um, oh, nice! On the chest to help the, the, with the breathing, mm. or you could eat it. Okay. You could oh. eat it like a, for sore throats and everything. You'd use mm -hmm. it for both things. Yeah. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my, my mom and my grandmother, uh, a lot of those things, I've got an auntie, she's 90, 97, mm. wow. and she's still, you know, I've got... I'm so oh, nosy. Yeah. She yeah. knows all of that. I'll yeah. bet she does. So, I will bet she does. These are um, the so acorns. Absolutely. My mom was like... Acorns. So they ate so acorns. Well, well we're not sure that Mr. Banneker did, but we know that... The indigenous people, the Native Americans, used acorns to make flour, and that's what we're going to be doing with this. Oh. Along with exploring Mr. Banneker's life through food, we also like to do some experiments. Yep. Both of us love to cook. I love this. Um, my father taught me when I was very young. He said, if you like to eat, learn to cook, shut up. I can't shut up. Mm -hmm. So I learned to cook at a very young age. And I love I love cooking. I'm the house cook. My wife loves that. We like um, to experiment with different things. I, I dried my own fish fillets, salted them, packed them in salt, let them stay there for a week, pressed them to get the water out, and that's actually the fish that's in this stew. Also, I made the heart tack because I wanted to see what it was like. So we experiment with a lot of these different things, not only here but at home, to, just to learn about what it was like because you can't really understand the things you eat today without understanding what, what people ate before. Yeah. So now, because I used to watch those shows, like, um, you know, and they talk about, like, the Underground Railroad, and they would pack food for their travel, and I'm like, how are they packing food for their, their travel? I never could understand that. This okay. is a reproduction. Now, all the major timbers are reclaimed from buildings of that time period. Okay. And the size of this, it's built on the same footprint as his original cabin. Okay. But his original cabin burnt down right after he died, okay. completely burned to the ground. Wow. Incidents, I think not. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's still yeah. an archaeological dig. It's still, okay. They still go in there and they dig up for things every now and then. Okay. So they're, we're not allowed to get in and around it. But they built this about 20-some years ago okay. as a demonstration of what his cabin looked like. Look like. Mm -hmm. now, what this is where, you, once you get about 15, 20 degree, um, inches below the topsoil in Maryland, it's always 55 degrees. 
summer, winter, spring, and fall. It's always 55 degrees you get down that low. Okay. So that's what the root cellar did. If I don't know if you can feel it. I can actually feel a little bit of the cold coming up from here. Yes, so you yes. You, yeah, you don't want to fall in there. Oh, no, I'm not going to fall. It is not pleasant. Yeah, I can feel it. Right. I can feel it. Now, this cabin was built on a, water, on a, a drainage path. Okay. So this gets pretty moist and damp in here. We have a problem with slugs, of course, the occasional other things. Okay. Um, what we're doing is we're... we're so the old-fashioned refrigerator. Yeah. When we have kids in here, that's what we do. We say, where's our refrigerator? Oh, okay. That's where it is. Okay. Um, we have kept things, uh, we have kept um, all sorts of different root vegetables in there for months at a time. And they're still perfectly good to use. Now, they may be sprouting. Oh, you know, the potatoes may have a lot of eyes on them but they're still perfectly good to use. We've had potatoes, turnips, carrots, parsnips. Pumpkin. Pumpkins. We had a pie pumpkin down there that we put in one October, and we didn't cook it until February the next year. It was perfectly fine. Nice. So, mm -hmm. But one of the things that we really get into at this time of the year is preservation, which was a big issue for anybody who lived in the Patapsco Valley back at that time. Well, for anybody at that time, pretty much. Where are you going to get your food from? Right. So you're putting it away in the root cellar, you're drying it. I'm in the process of making uh, uh, acorn flour. Acorn flour? Well, this yeah, is yeah. yeah. The the, he said the Native, Native Americans, Americans use acorns to make flour, sure. which okay. made those, um, what they call Johnny Cakes? What are they well, called? I don't know. That would be interesting. I'm going to try it. An acorn ah, Johnny cake. Acorn Johnny, Johnny cake, cake yeah. Uh, this is the time of the year where you had better have your winter stuff put away or you've got a real problem. Mm -hmm. So a lot of effort at this time of the year was in preparing for the winter. You're not, we're not going to be able to grow anything. We're not going to be able to eat any fresh vegetables until March. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, did they do fermenting at, um, during that time? Oh, absolutely. Mm. absolutely. Mr. Banneker was... Well, Mr. Banneker was a beekeeper. Okay. okay. So, one of the things he made was mead, which is fermented honey. Um, I, I've made a couple of batches myself. It's not bad. Uh, he would pickle and preserve things. Uh, sauerkraut. I mean, I make my own sauerkraut. Making sauerkraut is, is about as simple as it gets. You do it once and you're embarrassed to buy it. I was story. looking at that. Mead. Yeah, I was That's looking mead. at that. That's me, yeah. Well, mead is a liquor? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. It doesn't necessarily have a real high alcohol content. Okay. But they weren't really making these things for the alcohol content to be high. They knew that they could drink that and they wouldn't get sick. But if they went down to the river and had a, spoon, uh, had a cup full of water from the river, they would probably get sick. They didn't know why. But they just because of the yeah. E. coli, well, right? Or the where do you think the deer poop? Yeah. <laughs> For that matter, where do you think Good the point. fish poop? Good point. Good um, point. So they drank a lot of beer. Oh, okay. Now, when we say that, everybody goes, "Yeah, party on!" What they drank was a very, very low alcohol content beer. Okay. But they knew when they went through that process, what came out not only tasted good but they could drink it and it wouldn't make them sick. Now, it was, it was I don't know if you ever heard of near beer. Mm -mm. Very low, low alcohol content beer. Probably wasn't even that high. Near beer. It's called small beer. Well, that's another phrase, small beer, yeah. Near beer. Near, near beer. beer. Yeah. That's an embarrassing thing. <laughs> <laughs> but, they, you know, they would, they would, that's what they would drink. And they would drink that breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Whole family. Okay. Grandma down to the grandkids okay. because it wouldn't make you sick, so and that was important. So why didn't they do well? Thank you, ladies. Thank you. So this is Benixer Benjamin's herb garden. So look at the gating; it's so intricate. So it's about to storm. I'm getting some ideas from my own garden. Look at that. Okay, this is nice. Look, citronella. All right. Oh, they got spinach. Okay, look at the gate. And on this side is the wood. And it's supposed to be an herb. All right, look at this. 
All right, so let me go inside. So this is a reproduction. Oh, look at the windows. Very nice. So let me go in. It's pouring now. All right, thank you. I'm, I'm like, it's time for me to run now. I know she's like, ah, oh, I got to clean my glasses, man. Thank you. <laughs> Assalamualaikum, my global family. Thank you for watching. Please support Black historical sites and museum. Share our history. Keep it alive. The truth must be known. Benjamin Banneker was a great influence in a uh, historical person in American history. Uh, we're back at the Shriners event. We're about to have a good time and we're going to get some crystals and enjoy the rest of our weekend. Okay. Thank you for your support. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. 1200. We're trying to get there, y'all.